Okay, this is a quick walkthrough of the K-Means clustering project with the credit card fraud data set. Uh, so this is an interesting data set where we're looking and trying to determine credit card fraud. Um, so again, this notebook starts up where you have to uh, bring in these uh, libraries, import the libraries here, and then it talks a little bit about this uh, data set. This data set comes from uh, Kaggle, uh, this competition um, site with has lots of data sets and competitions for them. Uh, so this just talks about them. Um, th this is data from one month in 2013 um, with European cardholders and they have uh, almost 300,000 transactions and of those about 500 were fraudulent. Uh, so again only about uh, less than 0.2 percent, so not even 2 percent, you know what not even one, you know, about 0.2% uh, of this were, were fraudulent. So very few fraudulent charges in this whole data set uh, for this. Now one thing's interesting if you want to dive some more deeply is they talk about this data set here, they have a whole discussion area here, and then they have a code section here, and the code section is actually a whole bunch of um, Python notebooks like we do, uh, looking at this data in different ways, and you can sort this by the ones the, the ones with the most votes and see this. And like this one is a really nice overview of this data set and talks about dealing with imbalanced data sets. And one of the things this person does is um, sets up the data set so that um, th they're more equally balanced. And we'll talk about that in a sec. So so you're you're welcome to look through that stuff as you're going through this project. So again, this is our original data set. Uh, here now we're going to work with two uh, partial versions of this that don't have as much data. Uh, the main thing we'll be working on with is this uh, example with a thousand transactions. So we're we're going from uh, almost three hundred thousand down to a thousand, and of those, about five hundred will be fraudulent. Four hundred ninety-two. So just to get about 50-50, half fraud, half not, uh, it makes it a little easier to detect these. So we often do this when we are trying to manage these imbalance uh, data sets. Uh, but this might be overdoing it. Uh, here's another one that has 10,000 transactions of the you know, 284,000 that we started with. Uh, and it's still only 492 fraudulent transactions. So this is about 5%. So, uh, Rather than 0.2% up here, uh, this is 5%. And again, sometimes that's a more reasonable amount uh, to work with for this. Um, so um, here we can read in, we actually read in both data sets here, but um, we're just looking at, oh, this looks at the, the 10,000 one and the first uh, display of that. It's interesting, if we look at these features, um, one is called time, the time of day, I think this is, and then there's these features all V1 three, through um, V28, and then the amount of the transaction uh, that was here uh, for this. And the classes here is just det determines if it's fraudulent or not. Uh, so we actually change that if it's uh, one and stuff, we, we change that to either fraud or no fraud or add a column for that. So there's a new column here, which will say either the label will be either fraud or, or not fraud uh, will be our two labels that we'll use. Uh, and this is the command that will just uh, look at this class variable, I think that's either one or zero and make these fraud or not fraud based on that. Uh, but notice that these uh, most of these variables are v1, v2, v3, not very descriptive. So the reason is is that uh, principal component analysis has already done been done on this to reduce the a wide range of variables down to this set of 28 variables. So PCA has already been done, and we've gone from a whole set of variables down to 28. And these features are just labeled V1 through V28. So we've already had principal component analysis there. The only thing that's not in there is the time and the amount uh, values. And for now, we're just going to be ignoring those time and amount values. Uh, OK, so we can look, try to visualize this data a little bit. So one way is to do some plots of this. Uh, so here's just a scatter plot of this, and then we're uh, labeling some fraud and some not fraud. And again, here's the, this is the data set. Uh, let's see, what data set are we using here? Um, the one, 1K, so 1,000. So this is half of the 
uh, values are fraudulent, half of them aren't uh, here. And again, this just plots two of the uh, features up here uh, that we want to, and you can actually switch this. Uh, so if we wanted to promote, like look at the like two most prominent features, we might look at V1 and V2 and plot that instead. So plotting V1, V2, we get this other graph uh, showing this distribution, and that actually seems to clump the fraud and no fraud a little bit closer together, so maybe that's not the best uh, choice. So you can actually look at some of the different features. In fact, here's a, a plot of V1 through V5 uh, scatter plots showing uh, the different ones, and you can change this so you could actually uh, do a different set if you want to look at this data and some of the overlaps in this data also. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to do is extract uh, some of the features. Uh, we want to take the, the labels uh, away from this because we don't want to be clustering with the fraud, no fraud in there. Uh, the algorithm would quickly pick up on those labels. So here we're just p picking, pulling the, uh, the labels, the V1 through V28. Uh, out of the data set. And so we have two data sets. Uh, the 1K features and the 10K features. And again, we'll mainly be using this 1K features here. And so here's the uh, first uh, lines of that. And again, notice that the fraud and uh, no fraud are gone. The class is gone. And also the time and the amount is gone from here. So now we'll do some clustering here. Now here's your write-up questions for this. Um, and again, uh, you can, your write-up is linked here. You can click there to start your write-up and work with that at the top. So let me go back down here. We are just after this. Okay, here are the write-up questions. Um, and the, again, the first thing we set up is we set up to use um, the 1,000 transaction data set. Now, if you wanted to use a 10,000 transaction data set, and then that's part of one of the questions, you can uncomment these two lines uh, and comment out these lines. Uh, if you did this, now you'd be using this 10K uh, data set. But again, we're going to start by just using this data set here. Um, OK, I'm going to go back. I haven't run some of these uh, values here, so I'm just going to make sure I run some of these. Uh, yeah. OK. So again, our questions are, uh, how many clusters should we use and describe uh, what you tried as far as clustering, how you evaluated the results? Um, and again, we we already does have done PCA on this data, so I want you to describe what that was. Uh, and then try to analyze how well the clustered work and how should we evaluate the clustering uh, as it's done here. And then finally, uh, here look at, we use this 1,000 transaction data set where, so about half of the data was fraudulent, half wasn't. Uh, would it have been better to use the 10,000 one? And you can actually, I like, say, uncomment this and try it out and just see how it works. Okay, so here we're going to do our clustering. So we've done, we've selected the 1K data set, 1,000 data set. Um, we're going to try, try with five clusters here. And again, this is your job to try out different clusters. So I'm just going to run this uh, here. Uh, and then I'm going to do some printouts of the results uh, here. Um, and do some uh, views. I'm going to run the, this elbow and the silhouette analysis code because that's going to take a while to run. Okay, now I'm going to go up here and uh, walk through a little bit of this. So um, we did, I did five clusters, just randomly picked that. And this shows the number of um, items in each cluster uh, here. So we had one pretty long, cl large cluster that had 600 of the 1,000 uh, transactions in it, and then a couple other transactions that were very small uh, here. Um, so is that good or bad? Uh, here we also printed out uh, what percent of fraud was in each transaction. If we're going to do this, it would be really nice if, uh, like, if we would say, oh, this this one is all fraud, and this one is all fraud, and these one aren't fraud, or something. It would be a nice clustering then. So this is a very useful thing. So again, cluster one here, 
uh, is 100% fraud. So anything that's in that cluster is fraud. And this one is very little fraud, only 17%. So this is mainly non-fraud and this is mainly fraud and 100% fraud. And in fact, these other ones are all nearly fraud, all fraud. So three and four were 100% fraud and uh, two was 99% fraud. So this isn't a bad uh, grouping. So basically all of these are uh, fraud ones and this one is mainly not fraud. It would be better if this were like 0% fraud and these were 100% fraud, but it gives, gives you an idea. Here's another view, uh, just a, a, a graphical view of these by the different categories. Um, and you can try to look here, we're doing again V1 and V2. I don't know if this is this helpful in this site, so you can actually go up here and look at if you remember, we did this graph, and again, most of the non-fraud ones are down here in this clump. So you can see in this picture that there is a pretty big clump here, uh, uh, and these are this is probably the non-fraud ones. But and then there's these other ones that. Uh, so this purple group was all fraud. This green group was probably all fraud also. So it might help you visualize it in some ways. Um, sometimes we look at this elbow, and so here we're running, um, but uh, we're running k-means from two to twelve uh, uh, k's uh, clusters uh, by one. So we're increasing it by one each time, and we can see that. Uh, so you can maybe decide, um, maybe you want to try more or less clusters here by looking at that elbow graph, and then the silhouette analysis shows this. Uh, code and again with the silhouette analysis, what are we running it uh, here? So most of this code you shouldn't change. The only thing you should really change is this line. So we are doing two, four, six, eight, and ten clusters, uh, not actually five, which we ran. But uh, again, you can change these values. This is the only thing you should really change in this code. Here is that one line, uh, and run it to see. Um, so again with two clusters. Um, they try to do that, and you see, we do see some negatives here. Clusters with negative values uh, in silhouettes aren't aren't great. Uh, four clusters, some issues there, not bad. This one oh, that might be okay. Six clusters, uh, again some negatives with this. So again, you can kind of look through the silhouette analysis. This one doesn't look very good uh, here. Uh, you can also look at how they're spread out uh, here. Uh, and see, so cluster zero and one are actually quite spread out. And uh, you know, I I never actually run this with just two clusters. I wonder. You, so you'll have to try that out and tell me how it goes uh, here. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at modifying this cluster with uh, the 10K data set and looking at that. So here's, uh, we're swapped this out so that we're using the 10K data set and then we're doing the same sort of stuff where, um, Okay, so in, now we're doing the 10K data set and we're doing some clustering. I just noticed an error in my original uh, feature where I didn't have this. So make sure you see this in your uh, data that we actually then are doing the clustering. And again, I'm trying just five clusters as I did before. And your job is to uh, you know experiment with different cluster sizes here. And again, we can see the breakdown. So I think with 10,000 records, it's going to be a lot harder to do. It w won't be a, just a 50-50 split here. So again, we can see some um, two clusters with lots of values in and two clusters with very little. And again, if we look at some of these values, this actually doesn't look bad. Cluster zero had only 1% fraud, so it was almost all good. Where cluster, I mean, that was cluster zero. Cluster one had 99% fraud, so we detected it was almost all fraud here. Cluster three had 100% fraud, that was really good. And cluster four had 1% uh, fraud. This this one, cluster two, is a little mixed where it's 5% fraud. Uh, it would be better if that were lower. But again, uh, so each of these clusters, so this, um, this first cluster was, um, basically no fraud in it, 1%, and this fourth cluster was, was very no no fraud. So there, uh, those two clusters were the big clusters with no fraud. And again, these clusters were 99% uh, 
uh, fraud and a hundred percent fraud it was only this middle third one which was a uh, five percent which isn't bad but again and you can try to look at this graph uh, these visualizations if that helps you can look at your elbow there's not so much of an elbow here so it might be harder to figure out what would be a good range here similar with silhouette wet analysis here and again with silhouette analysis we can be only changing uh, these values and again this is going to take a while to run with this larger data set so here's our, our data set with two clusters uh, again huge data set and one and that almost makes sense because you're thinking uh, we have 5% fraud and 95% non-fraud so this might actually be not a bad uh, thing here with four clusters we've got a lot of negative values here so again start looking through these uh, figure out which ones are working well and what uh, number of clusters you think uh, works out well with this data set so okay good luck with this hope you enjoy it